All right, welcome back everyone. Let's talk about Fenwick tree construction. We've already seen how to do range queries and point updates in the last two videos, but we haven't even seen how to construct the Fenwick tree yet. And the reason I've kept this for last is you can't understand the Fenwick tree construction without having previously understood how uh, point updates work. All right, so let's dive right in. So we could do the naive construction of a Fenwick tree. So if we're given an array of values, A, and we want to transform this into a Fenwick tree, what we could do is initialize our Fenwick tree to be an array containing all zeros and add the values into the Fenwick tree one at a time using point updates to get a total time complexity of order n log n. However, we can do better. We can actually do this in linear time, so why bother with n log n? All right, so in the linear construction, we're going to be given an array of values we wish to convert into the Fenwick tree, a legitimate Fenwick tree, not just uh, the array of values themselves. And the idea is we're going to propagate the values throughout our Fenwick tree in place. And we're going to do this by updating the immediate cell that is responsible for us. Eventually, as we pass through the entire tree, everyone's going to be updated and we're going to have a fully functional Fenwick tree at the end of the day. So it, it kind of relies on this cascading idea. So you, you propagate something to the parent who's responsible for you and then that parent propagate its value to its parent and so on. So it's just kind of like almost delegating the value. So let's see how this works. Oh, one more thing before that. So if the current position is position I, then the immediate cell above us, which is responsible for us, so our parent, let's say that is J. And J is given by I plus the least significant bit of I. All right. So if we start at 1, well, the least significant bit of uh, 1 is 1. So the parent is at position 2. So notice that there was a 4 at position 2, but we're going to add to 4 the value at I, which is 3. So now position 2 is a value of 7. Now we want to update position 2. So find out which is responsible for position 2. So 2 plus the least significant bit of 2 is 4. So 4 is actually responsible for 2, or is immediately responsible for 2. So go to index 4 and add the 7. Then who's responsible for 3? Well, that's 4. So go to position 4 and add the value at index 3. Now, who's responsible for 4? Well, 8 is responsible for 4. So go to position 8 and add the value of 4. So now in position 8, we have 4. So now we're at 5. And then you see how we keep uh, doing this, just updating our parent, the immediate cell responsible for us. So now 7 is updating 8. But now nobody... Well, 8 doesn't have a parent because our Fenwick tree is too small. It only has uh, 12 cells. But the parent that would be responsible for 8 is 16, and 16 is out of bounds, so we just ignore it. It's not relevant. So now we keep going. So I is 9, 9's least significant bit is 1, so j is 10, that's where the parent is, so keep propagating that value, 10's parent is 12, 11's parent also 12, and now we have the same sort of situation we had with 8, where we have an out of bounds situation, so we ignore it. So the values that are there right now are the values of the Fenwick tree. And with these values, we can do range queries and point updates. 
not with the original array that we had. So let's look at the construction algorithm itself in case you want to implement this. We will have a look at some source code in the next video, but if you're using another language that I'm not using, this could be helpful. So given an array of values, we want to turn into a Fenwick tree. Let's get its about the length, which is n. And I recommend you actually clone or make a deep copy of the values just so that you don't accidentally manipulate the values array while you're constructing your Fenwick tree. Um, that could be problematic because we're doing all this stuff in place. So clone the values array and then start i at 1 and go up to n and then compute j, so the parent, so which is i plus the least significant bit of i. Do an if statement to check if j is uh, less than n. That might actually be less than or equal to n, actually, now I'm thinking about it, because everything is one based in, in a Fenwick tree. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that should be less than or equal to n. All right, so in the next video, we'll be going over some source code. So guys, stay tuned for that, and I hope you learned something. Hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.